This is lesson 1-6, which is compound inequalities. Our essential question is what are compound inequalities and how are their solutions represented? Okay, so our first example says, how can you use inequalities to describe the set of numbers graphed below? So with compound inequalities, we're going to be looking at two different types. One that is, let's see if we get to the second one. Nope. Okay, we might draw it on here then. So one that is an or inequality and one that is an and. So this example, you can see it's split. It's impossible for a number to be both less than negative 3 and greater than 2. So this is what we call an or inequality. So that means we're going to have the word or in it. So we would say x is less than or equal to, because it's a colored in dot right there on negative 3. So x is less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than 2. So that's how we would write that one. So now let's do a different type. So let's say I have negative 4 and 1 and closed dot on negative 4, open dot on negative 1, and shaded in between. Okay. So notice the difference between this number line and the one up above. So we're not going to use the word or on this one. This is going to be an and inequality. So the way that we write and inequalities, you can write it with the word and, but I'm going to show you you're more often going to see it written as one single compound inequality. So you could say, just like above, we could say that x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and x is less than 1. So that's one way we could write this. The other way is we could put it all together in one line. So we could say negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 1. So that way right there is the way you're going to see it written more often, but understanding that when it's one single compound inequality like that, it means it's an and, and it's going to be shaded in between. If you have two separate ones, like the first example, it's going to be or. Okay, so now we're just going to practice solving these. So it says to solve the compound inequality, 5x minus 7 is less than 13, or negative 4x plus 3 is greater than 11. So the nice thing is, this is no different than just solving a single inequality. We're just solving two of them. So over here, we're going to add 7 to both sides. So that gives us 5x is less than 20. Then we're going to divide by 5. So we get x is less than 4. So that's that first one. Then we're going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to subtract 3 on both sides. So that gives us negative 4x is greater than negative 8. No, not negative 8. Oops. <laughs> Made a mistake. Okay. At least I caught it. Okay. So negative 4x is greater than 8. Then we're going to divide by negative 4. And remember what happens when we divide by a negative. We flip the inequality. So this is going to be x is less than negative 2. So we write or between them. So that is our final answer. And then with inequalities, just like on the last one, we want, usually want to graph these. So... I'm going to put, here's 4, and here's negative 2. So the first one says x is less than 4. So I'm going to do an open circle on 4 and shade to the left. And then it says, or x is less than negative 2. Well, here's the thing. Here's negative 2, and so it's also shaded to the left. So it's kind of a weird-looking one. Um, the previous, on the previous example, the two or shading um, regions were sh shaded away from each other. But you can have ones like this. So that means that it's less than 4 or it's less than negative 2. So you might have a number that falls under both of those as well. Okay. And here's our last example. We're going to solve, this is an and inequality, you can tell, because it's one big compound inequality. So I, just to keep myself organized, I'm going to draw a line 
where both of the inequality symbols are. So this is like one giant equation, and it's kind of weird, but you're going to do the same th thing to all three parts. So we're trying to get x alone in the middle. So you can focus on the 7x plus 9, and we want to turn that into just x. So if we use our rules of algebra, the first thing we could do is subtract 9 from all three parts. Okay, so if we subtract 9, so negative 12 minus 9 turns into negative 21. It's less than or equal to, now we just have 7x because that canceled, is less than 7. Okay, now I want to get the x alone, so I'm going to divide by 7. So we're going to divide all three parts by 7. So that would leave me with negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. So there's my answer, and then if I go to graph this, I have on negative 3, I would put a closed dot on that because it's or equal to. On 1, I'd put an open dot, and we know that x is between those two numbers, it's an and, so I'd shade in the middle. Okay, so those are compound inequalities.